if you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony, and today we are in the new 2020 Toyota GR Supra, courtesy of Hanover Toyota in Hanover, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to click the link in the description box below. Dang, I am excited to be in this thing. A lot of you guys have been requesting it, including myself, so yeah, I am quite excited to be into this one. So what do you say? Let's go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so before I mention the prices, I first wanted to do a quick comparison. If you were comparing the Supra to the BMW Z4, as you guys probably already know, they do share quite a few similarities. If you wanted the same inline six cylinder engine found in the Supra, in the Z4, you will have to pay $14,000 more if you were to go with the BMW Z4. So there's a reason right off the bat to consider the Supra, but there are a few different trim levels for the 2020 Supra. First one being the base, starting at $49,990. Premium, starting at $53,990. And by the way, we do have the premium trim level today. And lastly, the launch edition, starting at $55,250. But regardless of trim level, power plant on the Supra, is going to be the same. Powering this beast is going to be a three liter twin scroll turbocharged inline six cylinder, putting out 335 horsepower at 5,000 RPM, 365 pound feet of torque available from the power band of 1,600 to 4,500 RPM. Power sent to rear wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters, which you guys know we will be testing out in a little bit here. And so all in all, zero to 60 time comes in at approximately 4.1 seconds according to Toyota. It's so the reason I put it that way is because recent tests done by Car and Driver Motor Trend, Car and Driver actually clocked it at 3.8, Motor Trend clocked it at 3.9. So one of those situations where Toyota kind of under-promised, over-delivered, which is a good thing in my opinion. So I'm gonna put it at 3.8, 3.9 seconds. So that is pretty insane as far as zero to 60 goes. Top speed comes in at 155 miles per hour. It's quarter mile at 12.3 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 24 in the city. 31 on the highway, you guys. That is nuts. And partly contributing to that higher MPG number, there is an auto start stop system. So when you're coming up at a red light or a stoplight, it will shut off automatically for you. Of course, you can disengage that if that does bother you, but that is gonna help you save a little bit of MPGs there as well. And by the way, the Supra does take premium unleaded fuel or 91 octane and higher essentially. But so before we do any kind of paddle shifter test or acceleration test here, I did wanna mention there are a couple different drive modes. Of course, normal is kind of what the Supra defaults to, but there is a sport button directly behind the shifter here and it did just immediately downshift for me so it is definitely going to hold the rpms at a much higher level giving you more power on demand it's also going to adjust the throttle response and i feel like the steering sensitivity is much weightier too so definitely nice that the super has drive modes because it's pretty much as expected in a car like this so definite plus there but having said that let's go ahead and slide the shifter all the way to the left that gives me manual shift mode here and let's go ahead and do a quick little paddle shifter test and let's see how quickly they react to us here. Here we go. Whoop. Dang, they're quick. Yeah. Oh my gosh, they are freaking quick paddle shifters. That was lightning quick, I love it. <laughs> but so anyways, if you did not want to use the paddle shifters, not sure why you wouldn't want to, that was a blast. Go ahead and slide the shifter all the way back to the right. That gives control back to the Supra and therefore, now we can do a little acceleration here and there is crackle. On the downshifts, there is crackle. Nonetheless, let's do a quick little acceleration here in our Supra and let's see how quickly, real quick. Nothing too crazy, of course, but let's see how quickly we can get this new 2020 Supra here up to speed. Got a little bit of a straightaway here with no traffic. What do you say? Let's give it some gas. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. <laughs> this car is ridiculous and holy moly, there was grip. These tires are ridiculous. Let me tell you something, you guys. In case you did not already know, I have a 2019 Ford Mustang GT, also hit 60 in approximately 3.9 seconds. When I hit the gas, I spin. These tires immediately put the power to the road. And so therefore that acceleration actually did feel like zero to 60 in approximately four seconds flat. Wow, it is 40 degrees outside today. There should not have been grip. There was. That was fun. <laughs> Anywho, also with that acceleration, I did want to mention there is launch control, though we didn't use it there, but there is launch control if you were to take the Super to the track or something like that, if you wanted it. But 
As always, to go along with that acceleration, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13.7 inch ventilated front discs with Brembo four piston front calipers. And by the way, the calipers are gonna be red, a little different color there. If you were to go with the premium or the launch edition, they will not be red if you were to go with the base super. Just wanted to give it a little tidbit there. In the back, 13 inch ventilated rear discs. As far as the braking feel goes, it is absolutely amazing. Another little comparison since I have a very similar car the Mustang GT. As far as that 60 to zero number goes for the Super, it comes in at 99 feet. Let me tell you guys, under 100 feet is absolutely ridiculous. Maybe it's because of the size of the car with the Brembo setup, but my own Mustang GT does it in 104 feet with Brembo six piston front caliper. So well done Super for an absolutely insane braking feel and braking test really. So braking feel has been absolutely amazing. Immediately brings this thing to a stop. To go along with that, touching on suspension and handling a little bit, of course, you guys probably already know the Super does come with a near 50-50 weight distribution, so that, of course, is gonna help you on the track if you were to take it to the track. Up front, you're gonna find a double joint type McPherson strut front suspension, in the back, a multi-link independent rear suspension, and, of course, hollow front and rear stabilizer bars. And in case you were curious, 23 and a half inch millimeter stabilizer bar up front, 18 millimeters in the back, but the Super does one better in addition to that little suspension suspension setup I just mentioned, adaptive variable suspension system, meaning the Supra is essentially gonna monitor the road, adjusting the suspension based on the road conditions and your driving style as well. So if you're going around the turns a little quicker, it's gonna tighten up the suspension, giving a little better handling. And it's also gonna monitor the road conditions. So it's gonna help absorb a lot of those road imperfections, giving a little bit of a smoother ride as well. But having said that, as far as ride quality goes, I will say you can feel a good bit in the Supra. Uh, adaptive variable suspension is certainly going to help. If it was not there, it would be uh, quite pronounced, but honestly, it's not bad, but you do feel a little bit more, but that is pretty much as expected in the car like the Supra. As far as the steering feel goes, absolutely amazing. A very nice weight to the Supra. Not too heavy, but definitely not on the loose side as far as the steering wheel weight goes, so perfect setup there, I would say. As far as cabin noise goes, I was mentioning to you guys earlier, really what you hear the most is the crackle of the exhaust when you're in sport mode, and I got it it. I absolutely love it and I will be doing an exhaust clip a little later in the video so be sure you stick around for the whole video here but then touching on visibility a little bit it actually kind of surprised me I kept looking at the Supra's proportions when I was looking at it online and everything I was like there's no way that thing's gonna have decent visibility but it actually is not that bad it is kind of a narrower visibility window it's not as wide looking out the rear view mirror there but vertically it actually has a decent amount certainly more than cars like the 370z the Chevy Camaro but honestly I can see perfectly fine out the back so really no issues there whatsoever. Did want to also mention, I am looking at a head-up display displaying the speed I am currently going as well as the speed limit of any given road as well. And that is going to actually come with the premium and launch edition trim levels. In addition to that, all trim levels are also going to give you rain-sensing windshield wipers. And this is very important. I love when cars like the Super have rain-sensing windshield wipers because that means it's one less thing you have to worry about while actually driving the Super so you can better focus more of your energy on actually enjoying the drive which is very important in a car like this, but that's essentially just gonna turn on the windshield wipers for you whenever the windshield detects rain or mist or anything like that. So one less thing you gotta worry about, it's kind of like automatic headlights essentially, but that about rounds out the performance segment of this wonderful super review here. Let's now go ahead and check out the exterior of this beautiful 2020 Toyota GR Supra. All right, you guys, so here she is. First thing I wanted to point out before I even start with the front, this car is low. This is awesome. <laughs> Any sports car should be this low. Definitely lower than my Mustang, and I feel like it's like old Acura NSX low. Almost. Not quite, but almost. So that is definitely a good thing. Better connection to the road. But anyways, let's go ahead and start up front. Taking a look at these awesome looking headlights. Six lens auto leveling LED headlights will come standard for all trim levels. And that is, of course, going to include three low beam and three LED high beam headlights up there as well. So that is how they're divvied up as you probably expected. LED daytime running lights also standard. That is that big LED light bar found towards the bottom of the headlights there. Also at the very bottom there, you will find a matte black front splitter. It definitely looks right at home on this one. And in case you guys were wondering if these were like air curtains that directed air around the wheels, 
kind of wish they were, but they're actually just, you guys can see it's just plastic. It's just a matte plastic to go along with that front, front splitter. But either way, I figured somebody would ask, so I wanted to mention it. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the super here, A-pillars. Take a look at this, you guys. A-pillars are actually gonna be painted gloss black, which I think would actually look really good with a black exterior. And that black theme goes with the side mirrors as well. They are actually matte black to tie in with the front splitter, but this is a gloss black. I don't know if you guys could tell on camera or not, but I did wanna mention it. And speaking of this side mirror, let me elaborate a little bit on them. Power adjustable, auto folding, heated side mirrors will come standard for all trim levels. They will come with memory settings actually as well. And a red finish if you were to go with the launch edition trim. And again, as far as these accents go, this is actually a plastic or actually a rubberized rubberized kind of touch to it right there and this little area right here this is actually a plastic finish right there but definitely looks good nonetheless it would have been kind of cool if they were functional in some way or another but either way the performance of this car really kind of makes up for those two little aspects which I wish were actually functional in some way or another taking a look down at the wheel setup 19 inch forged aluminum alloy wheels will come standard for all trim levels however the design is actually going to differ based on the trim level that you go with for instance if you went with the base or the premium trim that we are looking at right now you will find a two-tone finish a kind of silver and black finish to them if you were to go with the launch edition that is going to come with a matte black finish and they're a double five spoke design in case you were curious there and best part of it you guys you guys heard me raving about the grip you have some high performance michelin pilot super sport tires which i am now tempted to put on my mustang once again so dang those things had tons of grip anyways in case you were curious about the side skirts they are actually a matte black as well not a gloss black but a matte black again to tie in with the front splitter but now let's go ahead and make our way to to the back of this one no no shark fin antenna surprisingly i feel like every single toyota i review lately has that shark fin antenna but not the supra so but now since we are around back first thing i wanted to mention is that integrated rear spoiler it's actually integrated into the trunk there so definitely a nice look there to it led taillights are going to come standard for every single trim level they have a wonderful design to them definitely look very aggressive there and i did want to also mention another little cool feature of the supra led backup lights so when you actually put the supra in reverse they are very bright LED backup lights. I absolutely love that. It definitely grabs your attention and it's a cool design to them too. Usually you don't see that much effort put into backup lights so well done Toyota for that. Also a matte black rear diffuser to tie in with the side skirts and the front splitter of course. You got black Toyota Super badging as well as that GR logo in the bottom right hand corner. By the way GR Gazoo Racing is what that stands for in case you didn't already know. Kind of Japan's tuning company that kind of went all out on the Supra for Toyota. So that's definitely a plus as well. And of course just below it all as I had mentioned to you guys earlier I told you that there would be an exhaust clip here it is dual exhaust outlets with brushed stainless steel tips so as promised here it is you guys here is that 2020 Toyota Supra exhaust clip <laughs> Alright you guys, so now since we are round back, first thing I wanted to mention is as far as opening that rear trunk goes, there actually is a button on the key fob, so if you like, simply just press that. Also, there is a button on the driver's side door, yet another way you can go about opening that rear trunk. But once opened up, cargo capacity is going to come in at 10.2 cubic feet. Also did find there were some grocery hooks back there. Kind of cool to have a super as a grocery getter, right? Also, some LED cargo lighting as well. That is definitely a plus as well. Usually, cargo areas overlooked. You find halogen lighting back there, but you got LEDs in the Supra, so that is definitely a plus as well. Also, a cargo area cover back there, as well as you can see the two subwoofers in the back as well. And of course, we will be testing out the sound system in a little bit, so make sure you don't go anywhere. But making our way to the front seats, because as you guys know, this is not a two plus two seater. This is strictly a two seater driver and passenger, and there are no rear seats. So Touching on the front seats a little bit, 14-way power adjustable front seats will come standard. They will come with lumbar adjustment as well as side bolster adjustment as well. Definitely helping you find your better driving position there. As far as the finishes go, leather Alcantara combination will come with the base trim level. You will get a full leather finish if you were to go with the premium or launch edition trims and they will 
will be heated again with the premium or launch edition trims. By the way, those heated seat buttons are just to the outsides of the climate control knobs just in front of the shifter there in case you were curious. But taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped. I think it would have been kind of cool to see a flat bottom steering wheel on the Supra, but nonetheless, it is leather wrapped. As far as 10 and 2 grips, it is kind of on the smaller side of a steering wheel. And with so many shared components with BMW, I'm surprised the Supra didn't go with one of the BMW style steering wheels because they are much thicker grips. I actually think I prefer the BMW style steering wheel, but still nonetheless, the steering wheel isn't bad. Of course, you got your heavy duty paddle shifters right behind it as well, so that's definitely nice. When it comes to the startup, let me first start by showing you guys the key here. It is essentially the BMW key without all the extra metal and heavy weight that they add to it, so a little probably less expensive if you were to lose the key, so I guess that's a good thing, but Toyota logo on the one side, lock, unlock, and the button to pop the rear hatch on the other side, but it is, of course, keyless entry, so simply just keep the key in your pocket, walk up to the Super, go ahead and put your foot on the brake, and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there, and by the way, that push button start will come standard for all trim levels. And so but what started up, it is a kind of neat gauge setup, kind of unique. First time I've ever seen this particular gauge setup. You got your fuel information all the way on the left, engine temp is all the way on the right, and of course it is a digital setup front and center you have kind of a smaller speed limit indicator on the left side and you have of course a larger tachometer front and center giving you your rpms up to 7,000 rpm and you got your outside temperature in the upper right hand corner time of the day as well another little neat feature since it is digital when you push that sport mode everything is illuminated in red as opposed to the normal orange hue as well up on the digital speedometer that we have there so i wanted to mention that too but taking a look at overall interior quality when i first got in the super I did like the Supra sill plates finished in aluminum and that kind of carried on to the pedals as well. Aluminum foot pedals, by the way, will come with the premium and launch edition, not with the base trim level though. You're going to get standard pedals there. Knee support cushions, I also liked them. It made things a lot more comfortable. They're going to come standard on all trim levels. Wireless phone charger can be had for the premium trim level and launch edition and that is actually going to be located just in front of the shifter. It's going to come standard with those two trims. Dual zone climate control standard for all trim levels across the board. Also all trim levels, here's a big one for me at least, auto dimming rear view mirror with garage door openers coming standard, even for the base Supra. That is definitely something that really in luxury cars even have to jump up to the higher trim levels, but with the base Supra getting garage door openers up to three different garage doors, I think that's definitely pretty cool. And I do like the silver accents kind of with the door handles. It kind of ties in with the climate control right underneath the infotainment display, and I like how they carry that line all the way through above the passenger side glove box as well. Do want to also mention where you find that wireless phone charger you're going to find a 12 volt power outlet also a usb charging port and all around the shifter i love how toyota did this and a lot of bmws do this too carbon fiber trim finish around the shifter and all of that and it's actually real carbon fiber too as opposed to the fake plastic stuff that you usually find in other manufacturers so a lot of real carbon fiber accents around that of course you have your electronic parking brake just behind that you have two cup holders and there is a small little storage area behind those cup holders as well so overall not a bad interior quality very easy to navigate find out where things were so it's a very functional interior here in the supra but now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display it is going to differ amongst the trim levels once again base trim level is going to give you a 6.5 inch display screen However, if you were to go with the premium that we have today or the launch edition, you are going to get an 8.8 inch color touchscreen display. That of course is what you're looking at right now. All trim levels are going to get Bluetooth and audio streaming. However, here's one thing where I wish BMW got better with. And I say BMW because this is literally a BMW infotainment screen that we have here. Apple CarPlay is going to come standard. There is no Android Auto, unfortunately, with the Supra. And again, that is something that BMW doesn't do either. And that's why it's not here either, unfortunately. However, I do think it's cool that Toyota Supra does give you Apple CarPlay. With all BMWs right now, you get Apple CarPlay for a year and then you have to purchase it after a year. At least the Supra gives you that permanently. So, so I guess that's a plus if you want to be on the positive side of things. Factory navigation system, however, will come with the premium trim level and the launch edition. Touchpad controller with the circuit 
circular dial and buttons that's going to come again with the premium and launch edition trim levels and that's definitely pretty nice i found with reviewing bmws in the past when you're actually driving that touchscreen can actually be kind of distracting but the circular dial and buttons much easier to use when you're actually driving so kind of nice to have both though i will say that but so like i said this is directly off of bmw check out your weather at any given time average miles per gallon at any given time of course your radio information as well and by the way like i previously mentioned as far as the sound systems go in the super 10 speakers with 205 watts with the bass trim level However, if you went with the premium or launch edition, you will get a 12 speaker JBL sound system with 500 watts. That is the one we have today. There are speakers everywhere in this very small car. So you can imagine with 12 speakers in a car the size of a Supra, I can imagine the sound system is probably gonna be pretty freaking sweet. So what do you say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio and let's test out the clarity of this one. That sound system is plenty good for the Super, trust me. Again, 12 speakers, especially by JBL. JBL does a very good job with their sound systems. Plenty of loudness, 500 watts is definitely overkill in the size of a Supra, so plenty of a sound system for this thing. But so the last thing I wanted to mention to you guys is when you do put the Supra in reverse, you will find a rear view camera for all trim levels, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, of course, you will find front side and side curtain airbags, but also driver and passenger knee airbags. It doesn't come standard on every car out there. Also standard though, a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, lane departure warning with steering assist, automatic high beams, tire pressure monitoring system, and hill start assist. And I did wanna also mention, there is a driver assist package that adds around $1,200. And that is actually not only gonna give you dynamic radar cruise control, but also blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, and also an emergency braking system as well. All right, so but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like. Like, feel free to purchase some merch just below the video if you want to support the channel be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold